Good, good afternoon, Stingrays. Here are some announcements. Have you heard about SGA? No, I haven't. What is it? SGA Student Government Association. What the, What does it do? Or about it. Let's go to Miss Lashago and Miss Kieran to hear more. Okay. Good afternoon, Stingrays. I'm Mrs. Kieran. And I'm Ms. Lashavo. And we run student government here at uh, the middle school. So student government, if you like uh, planning, if you like leadership, if you like being a part of events that are on campus and deciding what kind of events and what kind of fun things we're going to be doing on campus, then student government is for you. So if you're interested, you should stop by um, on September 16th. 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 It's 8.15 in the morning, so you're going to go to the front gate, and me or Miss Kieran will be there to let you in early, and we'll be meeting in Portable One, which is Miss Kieran's classroom, to talk about all the fun things that SGA is involved in. Yeah. So if you are a 6th grader, 7th grader, or 8th grader, and you're interested in any of these things, we're going to see you on September 16th. Stingrays, if you haven't known this already, tomorrow is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Watch this video to learn more about it. I thought I was watching a movie, Towering Inferno at first. And then I looked real close, and I noticed it was the World Trade Center. I was compelled because I'm a type of person that can't stand by and watch other people suffer. And to me, they were suffering. They wanted to get off the island. And there was no way for them to get off the island other than the water. And I had noticed when I was watching the television, I saw a lot of you know, the ferries going up into the slips and taking people off. I said, fine, we could do the same thing. I could take people on my boat, get in there, take them where they have to go. And that's what we did. On the morning of September 11th, when the towers came down, millions of people ran for safety. Hundreds of thousands of them ran south to the water's edge. That's when they realized that Manhattan is indeed an island and that they were trapped. They were feeling helpless. And that's the worst feeling in the world. What was a person on the ground gonna do? Buildings were down. There were people laying under the rubble of the building. Firemen, civilians. My wife was there, and I turned around. I says, I've got to go do something. Just like that. And she looked at me. She says, what are you going to do, you maniac? I says, I'm going to take the Amberjack up into the city and help. She says, but what if they're attacked again? I says, well, then that's something I have to live with. I says, I have to do what I have to do. I says, and nobody can stop me right now. E even if I save one person or I rescue one person, that's one person less that will suffer and die. They were trying to evacuate Manhattan because nobody knew what was going on. You know, you didn't know if something else was going to happen. It was just a... Uh, you know, a madness on one side and, you know, they wanting to help people on the other side. They were just streaming out of the buildings. And the first mode of transportation they saw was a, a ferry boat. That's when they knew, this is how I'm getting out of here. 
They didn't even care where the boat was going. There wasn't panic in New York in the beginning, just volume. So it wasn't until the first building fell that there was panic. You heard the building go down, but we're in the slip, so we can't see it. That's when we started letting go, and then all of a sudden, whoop, engulfed. You couldn't see anything. People were actually jumping into the river and swimming out of Manhattan. Boats were very nearly running them over. Wait, 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 wait. These people wanted out of Manhattan no matter any way they could. Somebody wants you to go over there. Every mode of transportation out of Manhattan was shut down. All the subways were shut. The tunnels were all closed. They closed the bridges. They closed everything immediately. Boats, usually an afterthought in most New Yorkers' minds, were for the first time in over a century the only way in or out of Lower Manhattan. The process that actually had already started, there were some boats that were grabbing people, that people were lined up at the walls. It's just human nature. You see people in distress on the seawall in Manhattan begging you to pick them up. You have to. You have to pick them up. They didn't know what was going on. They seen the building getting hit with these two planes. As far as they were concerned, you know, we were being bombed. I was wondering if they were going to come on the boat, if, if they were, had people with bombs or if they were going to come on. We're a big orange target in the middle of that harbor. My job is to keep the boat safe, my passengers safe, my crew safe. Everybody was in shock, running around. They didn't want to leave the family. They had loved ones running around the city. One guy ran from the apron and jumped onto the boat. He grabbed onto the metal, climbed up right next to the pilot. So I'm going out there to say something. He slides down to the next deck. So the, the deck hands get him and go, what, you know, what are you doing? He goes, I'm jumping for my life. So, you know, you couldn't argue with him there. There was a small boat that was uh, at the lower tip of Manhattan. I thought the boat was going to flip over because so many people were trying to get on. And as I looked behind, they were, they were just 10 deep. And that's kind of what gave us the idea. We decided that this has to get better organized, and we better do it, and that's what we did. So we decided to make the call on the radio. All available boats. This is the United States Coast Guard board, the pilot boat in New York. Anyone want to help with the evacuation of Lower Manhattan, report to Governor's Island. When that call came on the radio, they were coming. I was uncertain of who was going to respond. About 15, 20 minutes later, there are just boats all across the horizon. Literally 100 targets converging on the lower part of Manhattan. When we came out of that dust cloud, tugboats, I've never seen so many tugboats all at once. There was just a, like a fleet of tugboats headed to Manhattan. If it floated and it could get there, it got there. All different size, shapes, and form. I mean, and they were zooming across this water. Ferries, private boats, party boats. I worked on the water for 28 years. I've never seen that many boats come together one time that fast. One radio call, and it just came together just that fast. Hundreds of boats converged on the city, leaving the sun-bathed harbor behind them. Dead ahead, the unknown. That was something I won't forget. It was just low, dark, accurate black smoke. It was like there was a big chimney in Manhattan. When we pulled into Pier 11, the dust was unbelievable. And then out of nowhere, you just kept on seeing people coming. They looked like zombies coming through the fog, and you knew that they were, those were human beings. Don't leave us. Please don't, don't leave us here. Take us. Do you need help? Do you need help? At that point, the Coast Guard said, not how many people are you allowed, how many people can you fit? Literally would take a bed sheet off a bunk and then a can of spray paint and paint their destination on.
Some of these people never been in the water, never been on a boat before. Housewives, workers that do windows. We had executives. And the thing that was the best, everyone helped everyone. I want you to hold my hand. Come on board. Get inside. One at a time. Okay, get in inside. I saw four businessmen lifting up an old woman with a seeing eye dog, a German shepherd, and they lifted her up like a surfboard and passed her over the handrails. When we would carry a load of people over, and there was somebody standing there that seen her husband or wife, you know, that made us feel even better, you know? Well, at least we got two back together, you know? So keep on going, you know? The guy that works at the ferry, he's a, a welder. His son was on my boat. He, he actually came up. Uh, he thanked me. We went back and forth all day long carrying boatloads, as many as our, our boat would hold. And it's a lot of people. A lot of people. You couldn't have planned nothing that happened that fast, that quick. No training. This was just people doing what they had to do that day. You forget all about what you're supposed to do, what the teachers school, and you say, you know what? Morally, this is the right way to go. And deep down, this is what I'm gonna do. Average people, they stepped up and uh, when they needed to. They showed me, you know, when the American people need to come together and pull together, they will do it. I do feel a way honored that I was a part of it. It was the greatest thing I ever did with my life. The greatest day that I've ever seen in all my boating, I mean, my life on the water. The great boat lift of 9-11 became the largest sea evacuation in history larger than the evacuation of Dunkirk in World War II, where 339,000 British and French soldiers were rescued over the course of nine days. On 9-11, nearly 500,000 civilians were rescued from Manhattan by boat. It took less than nine hours. I believe somebody has a little hero in them. You gotta look in. And it's in there. It'll come out. It need to be. I have one theory in life. I never want to say the word I should have. If I do it and I fail, I tried. If I do it and I succeed, better for me. And I tell my children the same thing. Never go through life saying you should have. If you want to do something, you do it. Thank you.